Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. Um, this is going to be a very different kind of video. It's basically going to be me talking about the channel and my, um, well, just the various things that I've been up to in terms of my gaming and just kind of rambling and, I don't know, just hanging out a bit. Um, I don't know if I'll make this a regular kind of video, but I thought I might do it today. Just have some time and felt like playing some old Darkest Dungeon and, yeah, figured I'd start up a video here. Um, first of all, I just want to say I am kind of blown away by the by the channel and its success. I started it about a month ago and I'm at basically 200 subscribers now. And I know it's not a huge, huge number or anything like that, but it seems big to me because I, I just didn't expect anything there. So I am, I'm really grateful that people are enjoying it and checking it out. And I'm glad that people have been so, I mean, it's just been really awesome to see how, uh, Receptive people have been, how nice they've been in the comments and stuff. I really appreciate all that. Um, I promise that in no video am I ever going to say like, subscribe, or comment. I'm never going to say that because I just, I don't know, it bothers me when YouTubers say it. Like, I, if I want to like the video, I'm going to like the video. If, I, if I'm going to subscribe, I'm going to subscribe. If I'm going to comment, I'm going to comment. I don't need you to remind me to do it. Um, so I'm not going to do that sort of thing. I'm also never going to monetize it or, or uh, turn on ads. I'm just going to leave it um, as it is. I think that's best. Um, you know, I just want it to be something where I can hang out and talk about video or, you know, products that I like and, uh, share what I share a hobby that I love with other people. Um, and they can share back, you know, I just, I think it's a great, a great thing. So, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I don't, um, look down on anybody who, uh, who monetizes or who, who makes, you know, the hobby into a lifestyle, like good for them. You know, like you can turn the thing that we all love into this, into this, um, career. I think that's really cool. Um, but I just, it's not my thing. I, I want to just, you know, hang out and hang out with you guys and share these things that I have. Honestly, that's partly why I started doing the reviews. The Shadow Dark stuff um, for, you know, Curse of Strahd, that's what I started off with. And uh, because I had this great idea for, well, I thought a great idea for a, a Shadow Dark campaign and I want to try it out. And so, uh, and so I wanted to, you know, get it out there and, and share what I had. But, um, but then as I was going along, I'm like, you know, I have all these... RPG products that I've either used or, or, uh, or plan to use or, or won't ever use again. And, uh, they're just kind of sitting there on the shelf, you know, as a collector, I'm like, find a reason to find a way to justify the existence of the, uh, find a way to justify their existence <laughs> of all these things on my shelf. So, um, so yeah, I thought I would start doing reviews of them and, and it's been great. Just again, you guys have been super re uh, receptive of it and all that. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the state of the channel. Just going to be, um, just going to be doing my thing. Keep, keep going. You know, I can't guarantee that I'll keep up with the same sort of schedule that I've, I've been doing a lot of videos. Um, but I'm going to try to do as many as I can, or at least as many as I, as I sort of want to, if that makes any sense. Like I'm not going to try to stick to schedule it, it, it. Like if I just drop off the face of the earth for a while, um, uh, you know, don't worry about me. <laughs> I'll be back. Um, uh, but it's certainly not in the in the cards coming up. I have a lot of a, a lot of other things coming up that I, I want to review. In particular, I have this new RPG coming. Um, so I started off uh, my very first RPG system was Merp Middle Earth role playing. Um, that's like it was the first like basically few weeks of role playing. First few months maybe of role playing was in Middle Earth role playing with my older brother, and then he got D and D third edition right when it was coming out. And so we, we switched right over to the ND 3rd edition. I, I never really played 1st or 2nd edition or anything like that. I mean, I, I have played them since, but that wasn't what I started with. Um, so I have, but, but so Middle Earth role-playing, MURP, was like my, my introduction to, to role-playing, to tabletop role-playing. And since then, I haven't played a, um, a, a role-playing game, a Lord of the Rings role-playing game. I haven't since then. And so I've been looking, you know, on the lookout every so often. I'll look out for one and just see if there's anything cool. And uh, and I found the One Ring um, by Free League Press or Free League Games, and uh, I'm really impressed by it. I liked it, so that's coming, and I'll probably do a review of that. Uh, I want to maybe start playing a campaign of that with my my nephews because I think they would really like it. They're really into Lord of the Rings, or at least one of them is right now. Um, and so. And so I think that'd be really cool um, to get us get a chance to play those uh, play those games, go back to a, a Lord of the Rings role playing game. 
Because again, that's just not something that I ever really got to do as a uh, as a as a kid, or since I was a kid, I should say. I haven't really gotten to do that since I was a kid. Um, but you know, we'll see. Um, it might not be actually all that fun in practice, but well, <laughs> I think it could be. Um, but I'm I'm looking. I, I'm I'm pretty happy about what where my gaming is these days. Um, I've got three groups. Well, kind of two groups. And one group is a subgroup of the other, um, and it's uh, it's really cool. Um, I'm playing with uh, playing with my. Um, I, I've traveled around a lot, and so I've picked up a lot of friends all around the country from different places, and uh, and so I have a kind of a big group of friends online, and so we were able to. I've been able to play a lot of different um, games with them over the years. And so when I started out my West Marches, I had a, a pretty big player base, which I'm really happy about. Um, and so I have, you know, it's a big group, but uh, really I would say regularly maybe about six or seven players are, are pretty are active most of the time, most weeks. Um, but then there are enough other players that come in occasionally to keep it fresh. And so with groups of three or four expeditions of three or four uh, it keeps it pretty pretty fresh and has that West Marches vibe I like it because you know this group of players will go out and then it'll be a different combination of players the next time it's a, that's a lot of fun we're using 5e for that um, you know 5e obviously is the uh, it's the, uh, the villain of the day the villain of the age in the OSR community <laughs> in a lot of ways uh, I don't I don't look at that way really I, I've had nothing but I wouldn't say nothing but fun with 5e. I've obviously had bad games and bad sessions and things have not been perfect with it. But um, but I, I you know I, I really have nothing but fond memories mostly of 5e. So I um, I'm not a I'm not a 5e hater. Um, I, I definitely have have tended away f from it over the years. But uh, but I mean it was it was the game that got me kind of back into gaming. Um, I kind of moved away. I, you know, all through middle school, high school, um, I was big into, you know, D and D third edition. Play with my friends, play with my brother. We just played all the time, and uh, and then I went to college, and we kind of I just kind of stopped. Um, so, so it's it was nice being able to go kind of uh, after college third edition. Just got me back into it. So I'm grateful for that, um, if for no if for no other reason. But uh, but uh, you know there are lots of other reasons. I think it's uh, a really fantastic, uh, really fantastic game for what it does. It's really easy uh, to to get into simply because of the culture and because of the uh, wealth of resources for for new players. And D and D Beyond is is you know say what you will about it. Um, almost all of my players use it. I don't use it, but almost all of my players do because it's so easy. I, I have a player who just doesn't really know how to manage a character sheet. <laughs> He's never really played. Um, without D&D Beyond, so he honestly doesn't know like what a paper character sheet is. Like, I mean, I mean, he might be able to manage it if he had to, but it's not his, uh, it's not his preference. So, um, so, you know, 5e gets, uh, gets props for getting people hooked into it. Um, you know, they, they've got that down really well. Uh, and, and a lot of my players really, really enjoy it. Um, one thing, um, that I'm, uh, I'm happy about though is that um, I think players are starting to move out of it. They're getting ready to, especially you know, given all the stuff that's happening with wizards these days, people are uh, wizards of the coast. My players, a lot of them are kind of uh, wary of the company now, and they're um, they're they're kind of open to the idea of sh shifting to something else, even if just for like you know, they're kind of getting the gross feeling from from wizards these days and the uh, the way that they're the way that they're acting in a lot of different a lot of different areas. Um, so that the West Marches has been great. It's been a lot of fun, and then the Shadow Dark game has been really cool. Um, I, I just honestly didn't expect expect it to work out so well. Um, my players are really enjoying it. I'm I'm enjoying it a ton, uh, and and I think it fits really really well. Shadow Dark and and uh, Curse of Strahd, uh, Legacy of Strahd, as I'm calling it. Uh, it's a great combination. At least in uh oh, uh, at least in in my um, yeah, at least in the way I think it's it's kind of being kind of ending up. 
it seems to be working out really, really well. Um, I don't know how much longer that can. I mean, again, I, I keep saying that I don't know how much longer that campaign will last, but I think it will last for for some time. Um, my players are are really into it, and uh, and it just seems to have like a, a it clicks for them. They're pretty heavy story players, um, and so that helps. But the um, the the emphasis on on combat has certainly diminished. Um, so I'm not sure how I'm not sure how Shadow Dark that really is. <laughs> it's not dungeon crawling, you know. So I, I think there might be better systems out there for Curse of Strahd, Legacy of Strahd, or the kind of campaign we're running than Shadow Dark. But at least the way that we're playing it, it's been great. The the sanity rules that I added in, I think, have been really good, really helpful, and. Uh, and overall, I think it's just been a great, a great experience. I'm happy with how things have gone and really enjoying it. Um, so that's great. And and those players are kind of, it's kind of a subgroup from one of my um, a subgroup from the West Marches. So that's that's been great. And then the other thing that uh, I have been Doing the other games I've been playing is the uh, Castles and Till and Shadow Dark game for my uh, with my uh, my nephews and my brother-in-law. That's been really cool. Um, essentially, we just play you know once every week, once every other week or so, and uh, it's just a, a cash grab loot fest. It's awesome, quite fun. Uh, really, really enjoying that, and uh, I think they are too. Again, Shadow Dark works really well with uh, Zintillin, and the, the threat level, the danger level has been great. So, um, so yeah, really super cool. Um, I've been very pleased. Yeah, so that gaming has all been real good, and uh, I can't meet. You know, it's it's some of the some of the better gaming I've had for a long time these at this point. Um, there was a period of time when I just wasn't really playing much. I had uh, I kept buying books. <laughs> I didn't really have groups to play, and then I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to get a group together. And so I just messaged a bunch of my friends from past and said, hey, would you did you want to do you guys want to play a game together? Um, and uh, and they were like, yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, and so they all joined into the West Marches, and that's been great. Um, and then I asked my, you know, my, my, my nephews, my brother-in-law, if they wanted to play. And it's just, so I think it's, you know, if you guys are, if you guys don't have a group of players, um, it can be tempting to just kind of be uh, resigned to like, oh, I don't have D&D, &D, you know. But like a lot of these players were people that I had, I would, you know, knew from work or from school or from, you know, just social groups. And I'd be like, casually mention that I play this game and and almost all the time people have questions like oh yeah I've heard about that uh, what's it like you know and then you start to be like hey you should play a game and you know sometimes people will be like nah it doesn't really sound like my thing and that's fine you know but sometimes they're like yeah sure I'll play and I, I think a lot of my players have been players like that players who initially just um, they didn't approach me about it you know they didn't but I brought it up to them and casually mentioned that I play this game and they expressed interest in in learning more at least and then just kind of talking them that way because you, know, you don't have to find an already active group you can you can make your own players you know I think that's uh, good practice if you can do it um so yeah if you if you don't have a group or you don't have a regular group uh, make one you know um, now I know it can be tricky especially these days because people mostly want to play 5e. I mean, that's that's what people think of. You say Dungeons and & Dragons and, or role-playing games, and people go straight there. They're like, oh yeah, D&D. I, I, they, they have an idea of what role-playing games are, and it's almost always, you know, Dungeons & Dragons, and that, uh, these days that means 5th edition. Um, but it doesn't, you know, you can say, like, yeah, yeah, well, this is kind of like that. You know, this is a game kind of like that. It's not exactly that, but it's basically similar. So you don't have to just play play uh, fifth edition you can you can do what you want um, so 
So trust try that. Trust try it. You know, that's my my advice. Um, but uh, if you if you end up having to play fifth edition, um, play it for like a session. If you haven't played fifth edition, you know, uh, you can give it a try. It's not it's not my favorite. And I would recommend, you know, I, I've been listening to the uh, the talk about the new edition that's coming out, or 5.5, or, you know, D&D 1, or whatever you want to talk about it. And everything that I hear, uh, I, I listened to an interview with Jeremy Crawford and um, Chris, what's his name? Uh, you know, uh, the guy who helps design the game. Um, per Perkins, Chris Perkins, that's right. I, I couldn't think of it. And... Um, I uh, everything that they were saying in this long interview just sounded like the biggest corporate, you know, corpo talk. <laughs> it was all about how it's perfect, everything's perfect, everything's new, everything's advanced. It's somehow simultaneously going to work with everything that came before, and there's no reason to worry. And yet, also, you're going to want to buy the new books because they're just simply better. So it sounds like there is reason. To purchase, like they're like one of the things I said. So, like you know, a uh, uh, a player who has the pact of the fate, the fate pact warlock, with the old books, can play alongside a fate pact warlock from the new books, and there's no problem, nothing, no problem at all. There's no issues. And I'm like, huh, that sounds suspicious to me. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's true, uh, but it certainly sounds suspicious to me. I don't. Uh, I don't believe that that's going to be um, just no worries at all. Uh, it sounds to me like one of them is just going to be super a lot stronger than the other. That's actually what he said. He was like, "Yeah, and I think what you'll find is that one, you know, they can play together, but everyone will want to play the new." And that sounds like power creep, power creep, and uh, an emphasis on player facing options. And that's that's one of I think what when a lot of people complain about fifth edition, a lot of DMs. Um, I think a lot of their complaints come down to this um, power creep and the plethora of options. That there is just so much, so much, so much going on um, in terms of what players can choose. Um, and I know that that can be really frustrating. Uh, that can be really, really frustrating to, um, to DMs. Because it's like, man, you just have so many options here, and you have so many different ways of getting out of out of any trouble that I that I try to put you in. Uh, you're just you're just out of it, and uh, and that's not cool. Because I mean, what's the whole point is that we're trying to challenge the players, and and uh, and yet five um, E makes it very hard to challenge the players. I think because of the number of options you can have, especially once you get past low levels. Um. But, um, you know, that all being said, there's, uh, there's certainly some, some good things about 5e too. I just don't, I just don't trust that the new books aren't going to be power creep and, uh, entirely player facing. I think, I think that'll be the case. I mean, no real help given to DMs. Um, lots more spells, lots more powers, lots more animal, human hybrid class options. Uh, you know, uh, I just think they're going one one direction, and they're going to continue to go that direction. I could be surprised. You no, know, I could be totally wrong. The books could be incredible and really helpful to DMs and give them a lot of options and tools and things like that. But I, I just you know, I don't I don't see any indication that that's that that's the case from from what is being said about it. So, you know, I have had a great experience with Five E, some incredible campaigns, some great memories, but. Uh, I'm happy that uh, I found the OSR, you know, years back, <laughs> and I'm I'm happy that my players are are also happy to shift over, um, just because of how things are going with uh, with all of that. Makes it more you know flexible for me. Um, so very happy about that. Um, yeah, kind of just rambling, but I guess that's okay. <laughs> that's kind of the point of the video. Uh, the the um, the book that I'm I'm kind of you know just reviewed and I'm most excited about right now at the moment is the Gods of the Forbidden North. Um, you guys should check out that review if you haven't already. It's really cool. Uh, the review is good. I mean, but the book is incredible. Um, 
And as I've read through it more and looked at more detail, it, it's become clear to me that this guy knows his stuff. I mean, the stuff about um, uh, religions and cults, like the cult stuff is really creepy. Uh, I, uh, you know, props to him. He made it like, like I didn't really want to keep reading. <laughs> I was like, this is gross. I have no interest in, uh, I mean, not no interest. Like it was like a fascination, but it was, uh, it was a creepy one. So I think he did a great job of, um, did a great job with it, of making it uh, horrifying and gross and and all that. But uh, but the, but the uh, he knows his religions and stuff. I mean the the uh, the Hadean religion in the book is basically like a combination. It's mostly like Roman Catholicism, I think, and like, but it's also got a lot of um, other influences to it. But they're all it's kind of consistent, self consistent, and it's it's clear that in his world, you know, you have a good and a bad. And I've talked about this elsewhere, I think, and um, I, I'm glad about that. It's I, I you know, I'm getting I, I kind of get tired of the morally gray, um, everything is awful, nihilistic RPG, you know, which is kind of like a, a thing. It's certainly a, a certain sphere of the of the RPG sphere is that view of things, right? Not not heroic fantasy, but much more like philosophical. Um, yeah, philosophical nihilism, <laughs> and uh, it's not something I personally agree with. So I don't, uh, I don't, you know, it's fine for an RPG or here or there, but just I don't like to dwell with it and delve into it so much. And um, and so I, I'm I'm happy that this book is much. It's much. It's old school. It's it's dark. Like it's not it's not happy. It's not light. Uh, Gods of the Forbidden North is Gods of the Forbidden North. Excuse me. It's grim, but it's um, it's like grim with a with a happy ending <laughs> like you know like ultimately everything's going to be okay and that's here you know the good you guys will win uh heroes are uh are actually heroic and they'll 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 save the day and stuff like that so it's cool not uh not just uh not just depressing but again you know that's something that i think not everyone likes i think it um the book does come across occasionally as a little heavy-handed in the um in the direction of uh, this is the good side, that's the bad side, and um, and while you know, I think it's it's good for the contrast. I think there will be some players who are expecting one thing, and then they they pick up the book and they're like, "Whoa, this is this guy has a very definite opinion," or at least the uh, the world is presented as having a very definite definite side to you know good and bad. But that's cool. You know, that reminds me more of like you know again <laughs> some eighties fantasy. You know, talk about like legend or crawl or um, well, I mean, almost all of the classic fantasy has, you know, good versus evil as a theme, and and the evil is really evil, and the good is really good, and uh, and I think that very often in the shades of gray, you get kind of this blech feeling. Um, so anyway, that's I, I'm happy about that. The book has a, a it's really cool in that in that way. Um, Overall, been very pleasantly surprised with a lot of the stuff that I've been seeing come out recently. Um, I have backed more Kickstarters this last year, I think, than I have in a long time. And uh, and many of them are really cool. Um, not all of them have been hits, but I think a lot of them have. And so, uh, very happy about it, ultimately. Awesome. Well, I hope this has been, I don't even know, it's not really an interesting... I'm not really doing anything but just rambling. Um, but I think I'll call it here. I just wanted to, to say thank you to everybody who subscribed and um, and to watch the videos and all of that. I think that's really cool. Thank you for, uh, for you know, welcoming me into the, the community in the way that you guys have. It's been really cool. Um, and I hope you have enjoyed all the videos that I put out so far. Going to keep going. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys. I'll see you around.